everybody, Matt Bell from the Electric Violin Shop. I just wanted to get a little bit more in depth on some of the um, details about how we record MIDI, why we record MIDI, what makes it different from recording just regular audio, and just sort of answer some of the questions that we've gotten from the uh, video and the sound file itself. Remember, this is how the, um, the example file started. One of the questions that we've gotten, one of the most common questions we've gotten, is about the piano. So we will solo that. So you can hear just the piano. Now for most of the recording, I actually used the analog output from the GR55 to go straight into my digital audio workstation. I'm using an iMac with Logic Express, but you can use whatever audio workstation you want to. You could use GarageBand, you could use Pro Tools. Um, I wanted to show what the different sound capabilities of the GR55 were, so I was using internal tones from the GR55 and going straight to tape. So most of them will look like, um, it'll look like here that they are just straight um, audio files, which they are. But I also wanted to show the capability of the GR55 as a MIDI trigger, which means that it's sending a MIDI signal out of the GR55 into the computer and the computer can use that to trigger different sounds inside the computer, in this case a piano. Now there are three main parameters for a MIDI signal. One is the note itself, it'll tell you which note it is, it is a C, a D sharp, or or an F, what, what note are we talking about? What is the intensity of that note? How loud is that note played? And that's on a, on a numerical scale of uh, zero to 70 or 100, whatever, the, whatever your software uses. And then the other is the duration. So we have the note, the strength of the note, and the duration of the note. All of those are adjustable in a MIDI recording. When you've, when you've sent a MIDI signal from your device to the computer to generate a MIDI signal, we can actually still change the voice post-production. I could even change the voice from piano to a different voice if I wanted to. It could go to a sax or a, a choir or whatever, whatever voice. Once the notes are in here, it doesn't really matter. Um, I can also change the, the spacing of the notes in time. If I played, if I was rushing a little bit, we can pull some of these notes back in time. And I'll show you an example here. We'll take this G note, and we'll say that I played that a little sooner than I wanted to. I want to back that up to the four count of the measure instead of the three. Okay, so we've moved that note back. Um, we can change the note itself. We can go from a G to an A. We just say that I'd rather hear an A there. Uh, we can change the duration of that note. We can, we can, we can chop it. So I just want to do, 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 bop. Somehow I made that enough sharp, but that's okay. I'll just put it back. Um, you can also change the intensity of the note. I don't have that pulled up on my screen right now, but I can make, if I want that note to be really strong, do, do, da, do, ba, or if I feel like I hit it too strong and I'd, I'd like to pull it back a little bit, that's easily done on MIDI as well. Just one technical note. When triggering a piano, because a piano is a percussive instrument versus a bowed instrument, I found it easier to trigger using a, a plucking style on the violin. So I'd, I'd actually hold the violin more like a, a guitar or banjo and just pluck it. It just seemed to be a little bit more natural way to trigger that instrument for you. When you're playing MIDI instruments, you have to sort of artistically, you have to think in a similar way to the way the, the player of that real instrument would play. Say you're playing an oboe, I put an oboe track on here. I have to sort of think how would an oboist um, play this and I have to attack the notes the way that they would, I have to phrase the notes that they would, I can't play double stops on an oboe unless I've got two oboes. Um, that's just going to give it a more natural sound. Obviously with MIDI you can do anything. Um, we could set the piano to where you can slide from note to note. It wouldn't sound natural but it's possible and if you've got an idea for that application, hey that's fantastic, it might be a really uh, wild and creative way to do something. But if you're trying to sound like an actual piano, you want to think in terms of how is a piano played and how would a piano player approach this piece of music. Um, another exciting thing about MIDI 
is the ability for it to transcribe for you. We get a lot of questions about MIDI for transcription, and a lot of this goes to violin teachers. It is possible to use MIDI for transcription. It's very easy. All you do is you, you play the part. You will want to select the key that you're going to be in. You can do that ahead of time um, so that MIDI knows what key you're going to be in. Uh, you will tell it what your time signature and your tempo are. So when you set your click track, Okay, so we can see that the notes have been uh, the notes have been transcribed here in on staff notation, um, and I believe you can actually move the notes from one staff to the other. Uh, you can change the notes. You can edit that. We'll undo because that's not what we wanted to do. Um, so it's easy to make changes in MIDI, and it will transcribe for you. You can you can play along. And, and make your edits. Say if I played a part poorly that I was trying to transcribe, I can come back and fix it. It's mostly easier to fix in the piano roll, and then you can see what happened in the score, but you can also change in the score. Right? So that makes it very handy for people who want to teach. Maybe they want to transcribe a part for their students. Studio musicians tend not to use a lot of transcriptions just because we, uh, we use a different set of uh, rules to communicate with each other. But I'm actually in a situation now where I want to write a part for some studio musicians who are going to record it for me later. And they're all classically trained, so rather than sending them a, a sound file of the part that I want them to play, I'll just play it into my computer, let the computer transcribe it, and I can send them the perfectly notated transcription. So while a lot of live and studio musicians wouldn't necessarily use transcription very often, it's nice to know that from a MIDI standpoint, it's very simple to do.